This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Play the game at least once. Then with your partner, I guess you're my partner, hello person at the computer, or phone, <laughs> choose one of the three sections below. All right, let's play. Play. Welcome, lemon lovers. Collect lemons. Avoid limes. Okay. Oh, ah. Ah. Oh, it's a clicking. Wait, that's... Oh, I collected them just by being on it? Hmm. All right, let's see. Read the code in your section to clarify. Let's first look at lines 1 through 13, and you do the rest. Just kidding. We'll slowly look at all of them. All right. 1 through 13. We're declaring a variable score and a variable lives. So this is going to represent something, but right now it's just made. So the computer knows, hey, we have a chunk of data here that's called score. What's going to go in it? Oh, and then on the event that someone clicks the play button, and if I hover over or go design mode, I can see, oh yeah, the play button. That's what this thing is. Okay. So on the event that someone clicks the play button, what happens? Well, score, we don't need to put var again because we already gave score a name. The variable was created up here. So score's created. Now we use score and put zero in it. That makes sense. I just started by hitting play. Score's at zero. Oh, and we get three lives to start. Set property score lives text score. Okay, so what this will means is that the score will be the score lives label. So I think we'll have to change screens here. Design score lives score live score live let's click okay so it's all together score lives label and you see how they split it up with spacing so it's going to be equal to this to the string score colon plus whatever the variable score is equal to plus the word lives and then plus and i know it's a variable because lives here isn't in quotes in quotes the computer will print the word out of quotes the computer grabs three for now we then play the sound and we set the screen from start screen to game screen cool now on the event that the mouse goes over the lemon what happens we play a different sound we increase the score by one right this is the counter pattern score equals score plus one all right and so then what we move the lemon and lie randomly yep we throw them around the screen randomly and then we need to update the text so we update the text down here because even though we added one to score it doesn't show yet until we tell the computer grab the score lives label we're going to change up the text. What do we want to change it to? Well, the word score plus whatever the variable score now equals, and we just added one to it, plus, and then if lives has changed. Lives wouldn't have changed in this, but we need to add it back to it to make it display right. Now, event handler, when the mouse touches a line, play a sound, we subtract from lives, we randomly move these guys around, and we put the new lives and all of that data back up in the text. Cool. All right. Explain, yep, call out lines of code that you thought were interesting. Okay, modify. Right now, the game keeps going when the player has zero lives. Oh, lame. Fix the problem. So if lives is less than zero, start screen. Oh, okay. So notice it says when it's less than zero. We don't want it to end only when it's less than zero, because if you have zero lives, guess what? Use the dead. I'm just going to go into show text mode, and it said I'm going to use that operator that we saw in the last video, equals equals, right? And so we're going to, we're checking, we're asking the computer a question. This is a Boolean expression. It sounds fancy, but we're saying, hey, computer, is the lives variable exactly equal to zero? Because if it is, boom, you're dead. You could also do the same thing, though, by asking, is lives less than one? Because if it's less than one, then we want to go back to the start screen. Either of those would work. Let's test it out. Ah, I'm trying to get the lime, honestly, to die. Ah! <laughs> cool. The only caution I would have here is if it runs too fast and gets skipped over, we could get into the negatives and this would run forever. So oftentimes you want to use greater than less than, but this works great. And it's an easy way to sh demonstrate Boolean and conditional expressions. So cool. Let's keep going. 